and may the peace of the Lord be with every one of you. Um, hi, Pastor Daniel. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, we are uh, transmitting from Jersey City, New Jersey, in the United States. And um, I have to confess, it's the first time that I'm going to have a priest so early. Here is uh, 7, 7, 7.45. So today I have a story from the, the book of the story of redemption, chapter one and two. This story is very interesting for us because it's the reason that why we are here and why we're living with this nature of sin. Titus 3.9 says, but avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. We're going to study the story of Lucifer and how he tried to confuse the whole heaven with uh, his arguments. More than 6,000 years ago, the spirit of envy, competition, and madness came into heaven. Lucifer, who was created beautiful and noble and high honor between the angels, he got envy. He got envy when he saw how God named Jesus, his son, equal to himself. He really believed that he deserved to be in that position. He really believed that yeah, Jesus didn't deserve that. That was his turn. And at that moment, his heart started looking way to become God himself. He started a plan between the angels and also include other words. At some point, the number of followers to his ideas were too many. Sister G. White says that half of the angels in the heaven were confused about these ideas. And these ideas are very simple. He's, he was trying to avoid the law. He was saying that they didn't need the law because they were so smart. They were in a so high level that they can control themselves without the law. It sounds very familiar to these days. It's the same thing as what is happening in the world. The world is not taking attention to the love of God. It's accepting the sin as a good thing. It's accepting a lot of behaviors that are not approved in the Bible, that are not approved by God. So he is using today the same arguments that he was using in the heaven 6,000 years ago. Some of the leal angels couldn't tell that Lucifer was lying to them. They, they were foolish by, by him. This is the reason God did not destroy Lucifer at that moment. Because if God, God could use his power at that moment and destroy Lucifer because he was being uh, disobedient, but because he had so many followers, so many angels confused, if he had done that, the, the, the proof of his love were completely lost. So he preferred to wait, to give an opportunity to these people, to these angels, to change their mind, to change their behavior. I want to stop the story here and do a parallelism with our times, especially focusing in our church. Is the same able doing the same thing in our church? He knows that when he divides us as a members in, in, the, in the body of Christ, he knows he, he has half of the battle won. He knows that when we start fighting each other, he has the opportunity to get in and confuse the whole church. 
he shakes our union in different ways. Topics like marriage, health reform, baptism, leadership in our church is used by him to confront ourselves. The easiest way to identify when, it's, when something like this is happening, it's going to Isaiah 820. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to, the, to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So dear brothers, every time some of our brother comes with a, a new ideas, come with uh, an, a new way to see some of our theories, we have to go to the testimony. We have to go to the Bible. If what this brother is saying is not according to the Bible, unfortunately, the light is not in him and we should not follow him. We should not proceed with those ideas. We should stop those ideas right away. Let's continue with the story and in the heaven. So when all this problem was in the top and half of the angels were uh, 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 foolish by, by Lucifer at that moment, the Leo angels, the other half, tried to talk to them, try to persuade them and to change their mind and try to convince them that the, the way they are taken has just one end, which is the eternal death. But Satan keeps repeating that if he would be the maximum authority, he will make them free from the law. And this idea make him gain these followers. But again, the leal angels to God came to him and tried to pursue him. It was not one or two times. The, 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 the lecture says it was many times, many opportunities was given to them to change their mind, to change the uh, rebellion that they had against God and against the law. But Lucifer in his brilliant mind, at the moment he saw that any argument was defeated by the leal angels, he changed the whole thing. He has one powerful weapon, weapon that God cannot use, which is lie. He could lie all the time. God couldn't. God cannot lie, never and ever. But he used this um, powerful uh, weapon to <laughs> keep confusing the, 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 the angels. So many, uh, like I said, many time was given to them to correct the behavior. Once he was close to a repent, once all these messages from the angels was going into his mind and he was really understanding that he was in the wrong way. But dear brothers, there is something called the ego and he was full of it. Even that he knew that what he was doing was wrong, even that he knew that he was, what he was doing has a really bad consequences, he thought that fighting for it, that fighting against God could give them the victory. So he continued and trying to get as much as angels he could to have an army to fight against God. While Christians are busy fighting for intellectual vanities, advantages, supremacies, the work is prevented from even beginning. When there is no unity, the church is irrelevant. This is very important, dear brother. When there is no unity, our church becomes irrelevant. We are not able to do our work, to do the 
command that we have from the same Jesus, which is spread the word in the world. If we are not unity, we focus so much in those problems inside the church that we don't have time to go out. So, I'm sorry, one second. So when, when these problems get into the church, we should act immediately. As in the heaven that many times, many opportunities were given to these angels, we have to do the same with our brothers. We have to give them opportunities to change their mind, the opportunities to stop those ideas. And we have to use the only weapon that we have this day, which is the prayer. We should, we should pray for those brothers every single day. When we pray for each other, it makes us more united. It makes the, the brothers more strong. So that's something that we should practice every time in the church. Pray for each other. So dear brothers, continuing with the story, Satan and his angels have went so far to go back. And he declares that they accept the consequences when God called them to have a big meeting with all the angels and Lucifer, he said, we accept the consequences of our acts. And now he is the leader of the rebellion. And he, rec and he doesn't recognize Jesus as their leader. And he is ready to take by force what he did not receive voluntarily. At this moment, dear brothers, Lucifer was condemned. He has no chances for a repentant, but his followers still have a chance. So God gave them another opportunity to the followers, to those angels that were foolish. And those half of the angels a little part got repented and went back with God. But one third of the angels follow uh, Lucifer. So at that moment, the book of uh, the story of the, the, the redemption says that it was a great fight in the heaven. This third of the angels fight against the other two thirds. And finally, Jesus won the battle and they were uh, kicked out of the heaven. At that moment, when they felt like they were not more uh, on the presence of God, they felt really bad. They felt the consequences of their acts. They knew that what they had done was completely wrong. And the same Lucifer wanted to repent. And he called Jesus to have a meeting. And the meeting was uh, given to them, to, to Lucifer. And Lucifer at that moment asked for forgiveness. Uh, he wanted to go back and have the same position that he used to have with the God. But Jesus knew his heart and his heart wasn't not repentant. He continued with the same ideas. He just wanted to have the same privilege that he used to have when he was in the presence of God. So at that moment, uh, Jesus told him that that forgiveness, the time of the forgiveness is, is gone. So they, stay at the doors of the heaven. And the book says that every time when the angels went out to do their duties, they just laugh on them. They make fun of them. They were not really repented. They were just trying to get a good position again. Satan always had 
the, the advantage that I talked before. And he keep lying to their people saying like, we have a chance. We still have a chance to beat God. We just have to reunite in some place and get stronger. So at that moment, also the earth was created and the earth at that moment was created for the reason to fulfill again one third of the heaven. And Satan knew that that was the best um, place to, to keep, uh, to, to stay again with the, with the angels and make it stronger. But in order to be there, he has also to work with Eve and Adam. And he did it, we know the story. So, dear brother, we have to be careful not to be used by Satan like he did it with the serpent. He tries the same arguments. He tries the same uh, logistic to foolish us. And he keeps working on us to try to, to take us out of uh, the true, and not only that, not only that, also to confuse in the church to our brother. So, brothers, yes, it is true that we have to be uh, very patient with these uh, brothers that are used by the devil. We have to be very careful with them. We have to give them as much opportunities as we can. And we have to work with them every single day, try to get united again. But it is also true, dear brothers, that when these people is taken by the devil, sometimes they won't stop. And we also have to be careful of those um, souls that just came to the church those weak souls that this kind of fights affects them. And they can get confused also. And said, if, the, if this is the church of God, why there is many fights? And they got away. So we have to also be careful for them. So dear brothers, as God was patient with these angels, we have to be patient also, but at some point, we have to take a decision. We have to protect our church. Our church has to be like our second home, a place that where we go and we feel peace. We feel comfortable. We feel happy to be there. We see our brethren that maybe we have a six, seven days without seeing them and it rejoices our heart. So it has to be that place. It has to be our second home. And when, it, when our home is attacked, we have to act. And after all the tools that we have to get the devil away, if we are not successful, we also have to ask to this brother to go away. Go away, change your mind, and in the future, of course, the doors always are open. But at this time, you are hurting the church. So dear brothers, I choose this topic today because on times of peace is where we have to be ready for, this, um, for these problems. And these problems are gonna increase in the future. While the time is short, while the time comes to the end, these problems are going to appear every time in our church and we need to know how to act. We have to be ready to protect the body of God, the body of Christ. So dear brothers, may the Lord give us wisdom to the time which is coming. We can feel that the time is really, really close. All the events are getting faster, faster and faster what is happening in the world. And we know that all the 
messages that we have read in the Bible are being fulfilled. So we need to ask every day for wisdom. We need to ask God to give us the intelligence on how to act on all these cases. So may the Lord give us this wisdom is my desire for all of you. Amen.